Good morning, everyone. Crohn's disease is an inflammatory bowel disease that can affect any part of the digestive tract, and it's thought to affect approximately 115,000 people in the UK. Now, it's a very serious chronic disease that's unpredictable for many patients. Patients can feel great one day, wake up the next day in severe pain, which means they can't complete their day-to-day -day tasks. In addition to this, patients often have extra intestinal manifestations, such as problems with their gin, a skin, sorry, joints, eyes, as well as severe weight loss. Now, it's not fully understood what causes Crohn's disease, but it's thought to have a multifactorial etiology in which genetic, microbial, and environmental factors cause the disease. Currently, there's no cure for Crohn's disease, and that means treatments have to focus on really controlling that inflammatory response. However, unfortunately, the majority of patients do not respond or eventually lose response to Crohn's disease treatments. And this means that patients go through a vicious cycle of trying and failing treatments, which, as you can imagine, is extremely frustrating. Now, the newest biolo biologic drug in the battle to improve treatment outcomes is ustekinumab, and ustekinumab targets a different inflammatory pathway by blocking two novel pro-inflammatory mediators. However, still around 50% of patients do not respond or eventually lose response to ustekinumab. And the big question is why? Now, some clinical and environmental markers have been identified to predict Crohn's disease treatment outcomes, but no real ideal mark has been identified for ustekinumab. What my PhD aims to do is look at why some patients do respond and other patients don't respond to ustekinumab. And I'll be doing this by looking at both retrospective and prospective data. So far, I've analyzed retrospective data and found three potential predictive markers of failed ustekinumab therapy. Firstly, penetrating Crohn's disease, which is a disease behavior. Secondly, patients with stoma, which is something they can get after surgery. And thirdly, patients with sarcopenia, which is a loss of muscle mass and function, very common in this patient group. I'm currently also collecting a wider Date, a wider scope of data on patients starting ustekinumab with the hope of getting a better picture of what's going on in these patients. And I plan on expanding my research by looking at predictive factors for other Crohn's disease treatment outcomes. Ultimately, I hope to contribute to a future where Crohn's disease patients can feel comfortable that they're and confident that their treatment will be effective and break that vicious cycle hopping. Thank you very much for listening.